Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Tarantula by Tom Daniel. It's what they called a wild digger model, which is a c code word from the 60s for a custom scale rail, which in other words is a dragster. But this one is supposed to emulate a tarantula. It's got eye stalk headlights, and it comes with some special features, like an inch and a quarter actual model of a tarantula, and you can have it uh, posed in a wheelie fashion, uh, like it's coming off the line, or you can use both the open or closed shoot pack uh, to finish off your model. It's a great styling exercise from the uh, early 70s, and it's been repopped here uh, as recently as 2010, but these kits are still widely available online, and you can uh, easily pick these up at a reasonable price. Um, it has colorful graphics on the decal sheet, and it's a skill level 2 kit, which is for the intermediate builder. It's a 124 scale unit, and when you're finished, it's 8 and 3 quarter inches long. It comes with about 66 parts molded in light green and chrome with black vinyl tires and some clear parts for the headlights. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, um, they came out of the box, which some people would call an open box review. My open box review, you can see in about 10 seconds. But they'll pick each part up and try to talk about it if they can find some words. But I think all you need to see is right here. Now, the colorful uh, decals are available uh, with good registry and uh, they go on pretty well. Uh, you may need some setting solution from the aftermarket though for those. And if, uh, it, you, just so you know, there will be, for the most part, uh, we'll be using Model Master's uh, liquid cement, uh, sometimes super glue for strength on suspension parts, etc., and clear. Uh, or white glue for the uh, window glass and headlights. But always remember to follow the safety suggestions by the manufacturer for any of the products you see here for your own protection. We'll start construction with the body and note that the sprues here are very large so be careful and uh, nip those off close to the body and then sand them down so that you don't damage the body parts themselves. As you can see here, the, uh, the body has a couple of mold lines on it that need to be addressed. Just uh, sand those smooth, uh, as well as, of course, the uh, sprue connections. But some of the tabs are still uh, visible here, and so you'll need to do some body cleanup. Uh, there wasn't anything that really needed uh, any filler, uh, but you'll need to sand all the mold lines smooth. To get into the corners on some of the mold lines, I used a uh, sanding stick with an edge to it so that I could get right down in there and smooth those out. And you'll uh, find that uh, a final sanding with some light sandpaper, uh, at least a 600 grit, will uh, take care of any uh, of the sand scratches from your uh, emery board there and make a nice smooth finish. You're going to want to go over the entire body to make sure you have a good clean uh, body without any um, blemishes to uh, prepare for paint. So now we can assemble the upper and lower body halves together uh, so that we can get a nice smooth finish when we're done. Um, the body uh, fits together fairly well, although there will be, of course, uh, a mating seam there. So we're going to use some tape uh, to make that uh, uh, set well, uh, and then after it's dry, we'll do a little bit more prep work on that seam. So after the glue has time to set up uh, and dry, uh, we remove the tape and as you can see, uh, there is a longitudinal seam here that needs to be sanded. Uh, mine came out pretty well with just sanding sticks and some uh, fine sandpaper, but uh, if you got an offset glue joint there, you might want to use a little filler on that seam to get a nice smooth body. Well, when you've removed uh, all the blemishes and done all your, uh, your pre-work, you can go ahead and give your uh, vehicle body a uh, complete coat of uh, a pr etching primer to make sure that it's got a good bite for the finish paints. Uh, I used the, the opportunity here with the primed uh, body to paint the end of the nose on the body, which is supposed to represent the pinchers 
Uh, and this is a uh, Touches One coat. It's called Electric Pink, and it was a uh, bright red, which uh, fit the build just perfectly. And after it was dry, a little blue painter's tape was used to tape this off, and uh, 600 grit sandpaper was used to sand it, uh, the overspray off of the uh, body, so it wouldn't bleed through to the final paint. Now we can start working on uh, assembly of the engine. So take the two block halves and uh, glue those together. And after they're glued together, you can use a clip or some tape. There's a couple of uh, posts or pegs on the engine block there that are supposed to make for a, a better fit for the intake. And when I test fit those, it seemed that uh, they didn't work the way they were supposed to. So I removed the, um, those posts with a clipper and sanded it off smooth. And then the heads were put onto the block followed by the intake. And pay attention to the directions, uh, but the, the parts kind of tell you how they should go together. Um, so test fit everything while you're assembling this. Uh, and then at this point, we're just uh, mocking things up to make sure that everything fits. Uh, the chrome parts uh, for the engine were nicely done. And to give them a more realistic look they were given a wash of uh, thinned flat black uh, paint with a brush um, and then dab a little thinned paint and let it run into the low spots and then wipe off the excess from the higher pieces to uh, give it a nice look. Now we'll assemble the air scoops and they're in multiple pieces so we're going to take and scrape the um, chrome from any of the adjoining sections to make sure that you've got a good, uh, a good glue joint and then smooth those out uh, before putting them together. Now the scoop on the left there was uh, assembled and the right scoop uh, had the inside painted with flat black brush paint to give it a deeper look. Now the uh, the belt system here has uh, was all chromed uh, but we're just going to uh, paint the belts uh, flat black uh, because of course they're just made out of rubber. So use a little uh, black brush paint on the belt portion to make it look more realistic. Overall the engine assembly goes together pretty well and the directions are pretty straightforward and just pay attention to the orientation of the pieces uh, according to the instruction sheet because uh, that can get you into trouble if you turn a part round backwards because these are pretty simplified parts and uh, they can actually be um, assembled incorrectly if you're not paying attention to the uh, drawings. So uh, once again any adhesion point that uh, has chrome on it or even paint for that matter you'll have to remove the paint or the chrome and scrape that off before you glue those parts together. So this could uh, obviously be more detailed you know if you were to want to spend some time uh, but it's um, a fully blown uh, twin uh, split blower split scoop 427 cubic inch single overhead cam engine uh, and it made for a nice looking showpiece. The large uh, spread headers are supposed to represent tarantula's legs and I think Tom Daniel pretty uh, did a really good job uh, of making this thing look both like a custom dragster and a tarantula look-alike. The, the seat tub was you know nicely molded, had uh, nice um, divisions there for the padding, but uh, it was pretty simplistic and kind of plain looking, so um, I decided to add some detail to it uh, by um, using some red pinstriping tape to make some uh, uh, harnesses and with a little experimenting uh, some different uh, materials were used and uh, I put together what would look like uh, a fairly r good representation of uh, the seat belt harness for the kit. The tires are pretty nice uh, one piece units and uh, but they they don't have much detail to them. Um, they were sanded with uh, an emery board to give the uh, tread a more realistic used look and then another nice detail that's easy, takes just a few minutes to do that, but as you can see, it looks more like a, a realistic worn tire on your dragster uh, than the shiny edge that it comes with. To uh, tone down the chrome a little bit, uh, I used some more of that thin black paint, uh, it's called a black wash, on the uh, chrome wheels uh, to give it a more realistic look. Uh, the fronts were a little harder than the rear because uh, they're thinner. Uh, and take your time though and scrape the chrome well and test fit everything before you assemble the wheels. Now with the uh, body thoroughly dried 
uh, keep the tape on the uh, pincher section there up front and go ahead and give it a, a spray of uh, color of your choice. Um, the instructions indicate using a green so that's what I used um, although I've seen this model done in many colors uh, but to give it some nice even coats so that you've got some good color depth uh, and uh, let that set aside to dry. Now we're going to mock up the uh, front suspension here to the body uh, and when I did that it seemed like it was just a little bit too high so the pegs or posts uh, the two uh, pegs that are used to uh, mark or uh, install the suspension into the body I thought were a little bit uh, too long so in red there as you can see I had those um, trimmed off so that it sets a little lower uh, on the final uh, assembly uh, so once again you can leave it the way it is or, or give it uh, the height that you'd like just by cutting that down some and the front and rear assembly uh, were then completed without any problems and the final assembly was done with that you just glue the front suspension into place and uh, for the back uh, end you simply put a uh, uh, the uh, plastic axle through the slot there for that uh, that's your rear suspension now you can go ahead and finish the um, uh, final assembly of the body pieces you can see here the uh, awesome web shaped uh, radius arms uh, and I uh, use some parts from my parts box because one of the uh, heads, headlight stalks was missing um, but yours shouldn't have any problem and as you can see I opted for the uh, the uh, rear uh, chute pack on the back of the dragster instead of the uh, open four panel unit uh, that comes with the kit uh, and you can pose it either way with uh, open or closed chute um, and uh, the windshield however turned out to be um, a little difficult uh, it was hard to get that to fit the uh, roof line be patient and use uh, use take some time and do a little uh, sanding on the edges to make sure that you get a good fit there and use some clear uh, glue or white glue to install that uh, but other than that uh, the decals go on fairly uh, clean and easy uh, the only ones that really need uh, setting solution are the big tarantula script and uh, the spider webs which uh, go on top the roof line there uh, but they make for a really nice touch so I would uh, go ahead and include those uh, with your build to give it a final finished look and uh, I think that you'll enjoy this kit uh, so if I were you I'd go out find one and put one on your shelf well we hope you like this premium model kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can find us on Facebook and always at our website www.rightonreplicas.com thanks